Yo, 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 it's your boy Luar coming back at it again with another discussion video. In today's video, I will showcase my brilliant diamond and shining pearl team. Hashtag my BDSP team if you want to participate and show off your team as well. I think it'd be fun to show each other what teams we're going to use for the upcoming brilliant diamond and shining pearl games, honestly. I will personally be basing this team off of the team that I remember using on my first playthrough through Pokemon Diamond all the way back in 2006. Generation 4 as a whole is actually my favorite generation of games, and it is a time when I truly got into the competitive aspect of Pokemon, so it holds a very special place in my heart. The only real rule I will have for this hashtag is if you choose to participate, try to keep the Pokemon to the main story ones only. Don't include any Pokemon that can only be obtained through the post game. As a personal rule, I don't like using legendaries on my team outside of competitive so I won't have any, but if that's something that you personally enjoy doing, by all means feel free to. I'll go over the Pokemon, the ability, as well as the movesets that I would like them to have to get you as invested in my team as possible. For movesets, we can use any move that the Pokemon will learn in the upcoming games or that they had available in the 7th generation at the very least. Being a remake that it is, I am more than positive that there will have all the updated movesets for all Pokemon. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, I highly urge you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, as it greatly helps the channel and you can unsub if you aren't happy with my future content. With all that out of the way, let's get started on my Diamond and Pearl team. Starting the game off right, I will choose Piplup as my starter. I remember him being my first starter all the way in the Sinnoh games because of how adorable he was. Also the fact that penguins are my favorite animal played a huge part in this. Later on I felt like I liked Infernip a lot too, but I want to stick to the 10 year old in me's dream so I will be choosing Piplup as my starter. As a starter Pokemon I don't get a lot of say in its ability so it'll have to be Torin. I really don't think HMs will be making a return again, I mean they have been absent since generation 7, so I think they will make that happen again here so I'm not going to use Surf, if not I totally would have used it. So far my moves that I can think of are Scald, Ice Beam, Flash Cannon, and Grass Knot. I will go with Scald and Flash Cannon for the obvious stab boost. Ice Beam and Grass Knot are great type coverage moves as well. Umbreon can also learn Drill Peck if I'm having trouble with fighting type Pokemon, although I have other Pokemon to deal with this weakness. Polin is a Pokemon I really look forward to having on my team because of its unique Water Steel typing. It's the only Pokemon to have this type combination. Steel is one of my favorite types, and in turn, I like Empoleon a lot. Yes, I'm basic. Staraptor is just so cool and I remember being dumbfounded at how cool it was that I learned close combat by leveling up. Staraptor is probably my favorite regional bird Pokemon too, so it's natural that I want to use him when I relive my Sinnoh adventure. The ability that Staraptor has Intimidate is already perfect so that's great. My moveset for Staraptor will be Double Team, Roost, Close Combat, and Brave Bird. I like this moveset because I can just about hit any type for at least neutral damage. If Staraptor can set up a Double Team or two at the start of a battle, it will make him really hard to take down as well. I've played through the Sinnoh region many times and I genuinely think that I had a Staraptor in most if not all of my playthroughs. It helps that he's one of the coolest looking Pokemon in the Pokedex in my opinion, but also the fact that he was able to be my flyer before. Staraptor can also turn Steel Wing or U-Turn if I need more variety for an upcoming battle. Easily my favorite fossil Pokemon, I don't often get the fossil Pokemon and much less use them on my team. However, this guy is just too cool not to use. The way you obtain one makes it all the cooler and ties into my wishes for the final game. In order to get fossils in this game, you have to go to the underground and actually mine for the fossils. I'm really hoping that this mechanic is brought back as it has some of my fondest memories in the Sinnoh games period. I would spend hours and hours in the underground mining and getting my secret base all spiced up. In a sense, Rampardos is tied with that connection to the underground and for that I want to use him again on my team. His ability Mold Breaker will be great to hit Levitate Pokemon with power powerful ground type moves. As far as his moveset goes, I'd go with Head Smash, Earthquake, Dragon Tail, and Facade. Rampardos can learn a lot of special moves, but his attack set is way better, so I want to take advantage of that. Another memory I have of Rampardos is battling my IRL friend in middle school, and he had a shiny Rampardos and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, so in my time in BDSP, I will try to hunt one down. But I won't be doing that for the main game because I wanted to finish the game within the first 5 years it's out. Man, my team is extremely weak to fighting type right now and I definitely have to fix this. Luckily the fighting type expert in this game is the third gym leader so we can deal with her early enough to not be a problem later. I also like Obama's, I mean Abomas and typing. He's weak to fire as well but we have plenty of other Pokemon that can take care of that. This Pokemon brings me chilling memories of exiting Mount Coronet at Route 216 and seeing this breathtaking snowy environment for the first time. His ability Snow Warning kinda sucks for our team but the chip damage on the opposite side also will help us. I'd go with Blizzard and Woodhammer for high damaging stab moves. Thanks to his ability, Blizzard has 100% accuracy which is a nice touch. Ice Shard is good as a priority move to deal the final blow, and then maybe toss in Earth Power for some coverage. He's a really good mix attacker so there's many different routes you can go with his mon for upcoming battles. I look forward to using him before it's all snow over. Toxicro gives us much needed resistances to fighting. I really like the design of this Pokemon and it helps that his typing is really cool too. Just watch out for psychic types. Having a Krogunk on your team for a while waiting for it to get to level 37 is going to be a cool experience and can tie into the anime a bit. Who else had a Krogunk? Oh right, Brock did. I made a video discussing his best team that he could have for Pokemon journeys and you should click on the card above to see whether or not Krogunk made it to the final roster. Toxicroak is a really powerful physical attacker so let's take advantage of its attack stat. 
Poison Jab and Drain Punch will be great moves to get some stab boost and either inflict poison or recover some HP. I will go with Sword Dance because if I can set this up correctly, then I find myself being able to sweep with lots of battles that I participate in. The last move can either go to Substitute or Sucker Punch. Kinda depends on how early the TM for Substitute is accessible in this game because if it's later on, we'll have to go with Sucker Punch, but that's okay because Sucker Punch is a great finishing move. Finally, we have Luxray. I never said that this team would be shown off in a particular order, and well, it's not. I remember right before making it to Jubilife City, 10 year old Luap was wide eyed in amazement when I saw Shinx. It was so cute, and I knew that I just had to have it. No way I was gonna move forward without having a Shinx of my own, and I'm super glad I came to that decision. Not only does Sinnoh have a lack of fire types, but it honestly has a lack of electro types as well. Because of this, Luxray just makes perfect sense to add to my team, and his design is super top tier in my opinion. I'll be going with a very generic moveset for Luxray, but that's kind of okay. Wild Charge, Psychic Fang, Crunch, and Iron Tail will be great for me. Luxray honestly has so many different moves and in turn type coverage that it could potentially have, which are all very good assets to me. You can literally change this entire moveset for an upcoming battle to suit you and I'm sure you'll find a super effective move in there somewhere. Luxray will also be making a return in the anime very soon, so stay tuned on my review for that episode. So yeah, this will just be the first of my many teams that I try out when Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl come out. While I'm sure there will be changes to the Pokedex, I base my team off the original Diamond and Pearl Pokedex just to be safe. There's a chance that some of these Pokemon might not be made available and that's quite alright. I encourage you to make a hashtag MyBDSP team as well and I'll be sure to watch it, I promise. Which Pokemon that I chose for my team are you going to have on your team? My team is not unique in the slightest so I do look forward to seeing what crazy unique team you guys in the community can come up with. If you guys made it this far then I just honestly want to extend my gratitude to you, thank you guys for watching all the time, and really the ones who leave the comment of the day for the discussion videos, you really are the best. Today's comment will be, where are my Unova remakes? So be sure to comment that down below so I know you're a real one. Once again, it's been your boy Luap, and I'm out, peace.